okay, so it's Easter, and you want to cook a turkey. Uh, but if you're like me, and you're really lazy, but you want delicious turkey, you don't care what it looks like, and you want white meat that is not completely dry and overcooked, you can try spatchcocking it. Preheat your oven to 450 Fahrenheit or 230 Celsius. So obviously you're going to start with a turkey. The one I've picked here is about 5 kilograms, uh, which is a good size. And we're just going to start by unwrapping it. Next, we want to take a peek inside the abdominal cavity for the neck or any giblets and just remove those and set them aside for now. Now the essence of spatchcocking is the removal of the spine. Now it's easiest to do this with a pair of good kitchen shears, but if you have a, just a chef's knife, you can make do as well. So we'll start by making two cuts along the spine, along either side. Now you'll be cutting through the ribs, so you'll hear some snapping sounds, and it will take a little bit of elbow grease to do it. Then once you have the spine removed, you set that aside with the neck and any giblets, which we're going to use to make gravy in a second. So the goal of spash cocking is to be able to lay the bird flat so the breasts don't get exposed to as much direct heat as the legs, so they cook slower. So the way we're going to do this is first take the legs and spread them a little bit, and then you'll want to push down on the sternum of the bird. And you have to push quite firmly, and you'll hear a crack as the bone breaks. Then we're just going to point the legs so that they face away from each other. And I've just forgotten uh, the bag of giblets here, so check both the abdominal cavity and the neck skin. And we'll just flip the wingtips behind so that they're out of the way. Next, take some extra virgin olive oil and just douse it over the skin, rubbing it to spread it around. Then we're going to season the bird, just sprinkle some kosher salt across the skin, and grind some pepper. So once the oven is preheated, you can put the turkey directly on the rack, and then put a pan underneath to catch the drippings. Next, you're going to want to chop up the spine and giblets, and we're going to put a little oil in a pot, and just brown them for about four or five minutes, just to give them uh, a little extra flavor. And then we'll add some vegetables, carrots and celery. And then again, just let these brown for another five minutes or so. If you have fresh herbs, um, we can use rosemary. Sage is also a good choice, or thyme. We'll add some black peppercorns. And because these are gonna be sitting in the pot for a while, we can add these whole and just stir these up until everything's nicely browned. Then we'll add about half a liter of chicken stock. And if the water level is not above the vegetables, we can add a little bit of extra water to bring it up. So after about 45 minutes, we can drain our pot through a strainer, remove any solids, and then we'll check on the turkey. So this is after about an hour. Checking the breast, we should see Around between 65 and 70 is a good range. Any higher will start drying out. And then we're just going to tent it with foil to let it rest. While we're doing this, we can take our pan and pour out any drippings. And we'll just add these to our gravy to give it a little bit more flavor. So there should be some foam stuck to the foil. Um, you can add a little bit of water in to dissolve it and then pour that out as well. So it should separate into two layers. Just skim off the fat on top. To thicken our gravy, we're going to take about three tablespoons of butter, melt that, and then we'll mix in four tablespoons of flour. And then we're just going to stir this in a pot until we get a nice root. It should just start turning brown. And then we're going to pour in our, our stock, and then just whisk constantly as you're adding it. We'll add a little bit of soy sauce. and a touch of MSG. This seems, might seem odd to put into gravy, but it really brings out the flavor. And then we're gonna bring this up to a boil and let it simmer for about another 20 minutes or so to reduce. And then 
We'll flavor with salt, just to taste. And then by then, our turkey should be ready to carve. So to start, we want to remove the limbs. So you can cut down the skin in the corner of the drumstick. And we're just going to remove that from the rest of the turkey. Um, we'll do the same thing with the wings at the shoulder joints. And then to get the breasts out, make a cut down the length of the breastbone. And you should be able to get the breast off in one piece. The important thing to remember when you're cutting meat uh, in order to present it is you always want to cut across the grain. This leaves short muscle fibers that are easier to chew on rather than long and stringy ones. Now, the wings can be left alone. They're easy enough to eat. Uh, but the leg is sort of unwieldy. So what we want to do is first separate the drumstick from the thigh and the hip. So we're going to want to cut through the tissue and feel around for the joint and just cut around that with the knife. And once you've got the two separated, the drumstick can be left as is. It's easy enough to eat. But the meat on the thigh is harder to get at. So what we want to do is just cut as much of it off as we can. And then, like the breast, we're going to cut against the grain to cut it into manageable pieces. So if you're serving for a table, you can arrange the slices on a platter, like so. Otherwise, if you're doing individual plates, you can do something like this. So mashed potatoes make a great accompaniment, of course, for turkey. And don't forget the gravy. So this whole process took about an hour and a half to complete. I hope you enjoy.